Hey guys, Weeby News here. So today I'm going to be doing my episode review for Dongrepa 3 Despair Side, episode 5. And a few of you guys may be wondering where my review is for Future Side, episode 5. And if you have not already heard, I ended up getting a copyright claim on that video. Thankfully, it wasn't a strike, so I haven't lost any sort of privileges on my account. I can still monetize, I can still make videos longer than 15 minutes. So that's good. But it does seem that Universal Japan is getting really strict about this and taking down videos that have clips even if they're muted in the video so just a heads up if you're making videos or if you know somebody making videos using the clips try to warn them and let them know to use pictures instead but I'm going to try and put that video back up I don't know if I should dispute the claim or if I should just try to re-upload it with pictures instead of clips I'm probably going to end up doing the second one instead of the first. I think it'll just be easier and it'll save me the trouble of having to go through the copyright claim and all that stuff. So I'll probably just end up doing that. But anyways, that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and get on into the review. This episode was a really good one and it's definitely the calm before the storm of the despair arc. Or at least that's the feeling that it gave me. So the episode opens up and it shows Ryota getting bullied quite a bit when he's younger and it shows how he turned to anime and how he watched that to fill himself with hope and eventually began creating it on his own. And eventually as he got older we see that he becomes quite obsessed with it and believes that creating anime will create a new hope in the world and eventually make it better. But I'll talk about this a little bit more later on. The first thing I want to cover is the fact that we got an entire 6 month time skip in this episode. meaning that the 78th class, Nagi's class, will be entering the school very soon, which we see at the end of the episode. But during the six months, Chisa spends all of her time teaching at the reserve course, and she learns quite a bit from it as well. She talks to Juzo about her knowledge of the Izuru Kamakura project and how she knows that a majority of the reserve course funding is actually going towards it. She also points out the convenience of the time that Hajime dropped out compared to when the Izuru Kamakura project started. And finally, she expresses that the principal and the board of trustees, or the steering committee as most of us are familiar calling it, are the ones who are moving forward with this plan in secret. So I'm hoping this whole conversation will set up for Juzo to get the trustee ID and of course listen in on a secret meeting or find out about the Izuru Kamakura project and get a redemption arc for his character because he really needs one right now. <laughs> in the next scene, we see Jin Kirigiri give Chisa her job back as a full-time homeroom teacher for the 77th class. They also mention that Jin has been negotiating for Kamida's suspension to be lifted, but also that they've tried to contact him before but have had no success so far. So I'm really curious as to where Kamida is and when he'll show up in the story again. So finally in the scene, I want to talk about the fact that we see several of the 78th class's profile sitting on Kirigiri's desk, which the Tumblr user Tai Chen Chen translated and as always, I will link her blog in the description if you guys want to check it out. And basically the only profiles you can read in this are Kirigiri and Asahina's and all you can really see from what I can tell is the likes and the dislikes as well. It shows that Kirigiri likes hair braids and dislikes Goya and Coriander and that Asahina likes donuts and dislikes calculating. So in the next scene we see Chisei Gizome get welcomed back by the 77th class and everybody's in really high spirits to see her. It really doesn't seem like there's any despair at all honestly. But the main thing I want to talk about here is the fact that Sionji has grown twice her size now and actually looks like the picture that we see in Super Dragon Ball 2 when you're investigating as Hajime right before the sixth trial. But of course her personality is just as rotten as always. So in the next scene we see more of Ryota and also his relationship with the ultimate imposter. And like I said before, Ryota became obsessed with the idea of creating anime in order to help people and to spread hope. So eventually the ultimate imposter leaves to go get some food, but right before the scene cuts we see Yuto Kamashiro walking behind him. And if you don't know who he is, he is a character from the light novel Danganronpa Zero, which if you guys haven't read that novel already, I highly recommend you do so. I'll leave links in the description to the translated versions of it, the full translated novels. I really think we're going to start seeing the despair side connect to that novel very soon and it's very important to the overall story of Danganronpa, so I highly 
highly recommend you guys read it. And if you don't have time to read it, there's tons of different quick, easy summaries online. And I also go through a lot of the big important parts in my Junko and Ashima analysis. So you can also get an idea of the story from that video as well. But other than that, there's people who've done lit reads of it and things along those lines. So there's a lot of places to watch it or read it. And I highly recommend you guys do so. But continuing on with the episode, we see the despair queen herself, Junko Inoshima, officially signifying that the others will fall into despair very soon. In this scene, Junko narrates it as if she's in a movie and even mentions the fact that she has already began to plan the biggest, most atrocious despair inducing incident in human history. But in this scene, we see Makuro Ikasaba as well, which is exciting because we don't really know a whole lot about her character, so I'm really hoping we'll get to learn more in this anime. And one of the things that stood out the most in Junko and Makuro's relationship, and especially in this conversation, is how Makuro just seems completely consumed by despair. Junko even tries to kill her during the car ride, and Makuro just blushes it off, saying that, oh, it's so sweet how her sister wants to plunge herself in despair by killing me. But overall, I think seeing the way that Makuro acts right here might give us a glimpse into the future of how some of the 77th class members might act once they start to fall into despair. So with all the murder attempts out of the way, Jinko expresses to Makuro that they will be attending Hope's Peak Academy, and Makuro points out how happy Jinko seems to be about this. But moving back to the scene with Ryota Michirai and the ultimate imposter, we see Ryota pass out from malnourishment and overworking. Before the ultimate imposter really knows what happened to him, he runs to go get Mikan Sumiki to make sure that he's healthy. Of course, when he initially gets Mikan and picks her up and runs her to Ryota's apartment, she believes that he is doing so for different, more sexual reasons. Which, if you guys have watched my Mikan character analysis, I talk a lot there that it's heavily implied that Mikan did receive a lot of sexual abuse growing up, so it's not too shocking that she would jump immediately to this conclusion. Once Mikan is there, she confirms that it is from overworking and malnutrition and states that if he rests for a while, he will be fine. She then asks the ultimate imposter what's going on and he begins to explain why he started acting as Ryota Mitarai. He states that when he first started going to school there, he began to hear odd noises in the hallway, which eventually led him to meet Ryota Mitarai. After getting Mitarai back into bed, he states that he is no longer able to continue the facade of acting as Tagami and that he needs somebody new to impersonate. Then he states that he's done research on Ryota and knows that he finds everything unpleasant other than making anime. So since Ryota does not want to associate himself with the outside world and the ultimate imposter needed a new identity, they eventually come to the conclusion that the imposter will now impersonate Ryota in the 77th class. And of course, after telling this story to Mikan, she at first believes he's going to kill her. And then when he states that he is not going to do that, she assumes that she'll have to do something sexual in order to be forgiven for learning such knowledge. This action, I think again, relates to a lot of the emotional and sexual abuse that Mikan more than likely experienced both at school and in her home life. But the ultimate imposter kindly stops her and tells her that he trusts her. And then Mikan states that nobody had ever been this nice to her before, to which he tells her to be more confident. Overall, this scene was really sweet and I was really happy that we got to learn more about the ultimate imposter and why he started out as Tagami in Super Danganronpa 2, but was disguised as Ryota in this. Also, it was really cool to see him showing his own personality and how he cared both for for Ryota and for Mikan other than impersonating somebody else. We do get to see some of his personality and hear a little bit about his personal backstory in his free time events in Super Danganronpa 2, but it was really cool to see him here with the facade just completely down being himself. I'm also really interested to see what becomes of him and Mikan's relationship since she states that he was the first person to be that nice to her. A lot of us I think always assume that Junko was the first person to be nice to her, so this is a little bit interesting. I would enjoy to see them develop some sort of friendship though before Junko comes and destroys it all with despair. And then in the next scene we get to see Makoto Naegi stepping into Hope's Peak Academy for his first and of course final year at the school and a glimpse of Junko and Makura before they step in as well. And the interesting thing here is that you can see Junko is sketching a design of Monokuma and actually ends up basing his lightning bolt eye off of the design of Hope's Peak Academy's logo. And then we see 
see Hajime lying in a hospital bed thinking about the words of Juzo and eventually in the room that will turn him into Izuru Kamakura, thinking about how he will now be the protagonist of his own story with a talent and how he can become a new version and be someone who is proud to be around Chiaki. And right before the episode ends, we see his eyes become bloodshot red and the screen then states beginning of the end. So now with Junko and Izuru both in the picture, I definitely think this will be the beginning of the end for the 77th class. And finally, I want to add in that on the official website for Dangrafa 3, you can see that Hajime is no longer on the Despair Side artwork. And also I had this picture sent to me by the Twitter user Wu Din, and as always, of course, I will link the original post and the account in the description, and they showed me a picture that was the artwork brightened up, and now you can see Israel a lot better, and also just shattered pieces of material covered in blood, definitely foreboding to lots of death and despair, and also, I'm not sure if it's just me, but this picture of him reminds me a lot of that flashback when Nagi saw Izuru as well, but I just thought that was a cool thing I would point out to you guys. But anyway, Anyways, that concludes my episode review. Hopefully this one will not get taken down for a copyright claim. I'm only going to use pictures for it. Also, I will try to get that other episode review back up and in action. I think it's really lame that it got taken down in the first place, but um, disputing a claim, I've heard that it doesn't really work most of the time, so I'm probably just going to end up re-uploading it, like I said before. So keep an eye out for that in the next couple of days if you haven't watched it yet. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be really cool if you left a like or a comment it would really help me out and I will see you guys real soon oh no <laughs> oh I don't like this though this probably means he's gonna die next <laughs> he's so cute no way ah he's from Nagra Zero. <laughs> that's awesome it's like the tiniest little snippet but I'm so really excited about it let's see who I think it is sounds like her that's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, Jugo <laughs> oh yes of course it's a cliffhanger Subscribe to Weeby News for more hope-filled videos.